All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Elizabeth Valero. I'm the activities director for Miami Palmetto Senior. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Well, not coming out tonight. I'm so used to saying that for being in your homes tonight on our Zoom um, uh, for our freshman orientation Q&A. Um, what we're going to be doing tonight, you probably have noticed that everyone is on mute. I have muted everyone so that we can make sure that we're hearing um, and that you guys can hear us because when there's background noise and you don't realize that you're unmuted, sometimes it's very difficult to hear. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is answering your questions. Most of you have already seen our orientation video and I want to start off by welcoming you, either you freshmen who are here in person or you, your parents who are here as well. Um, I want to welcome you all to Palmetto senior wishing we were doing this in person but still glad to see your faces um, i'm going to introduce to you our panel for this evening um, so first we have our principal miss dobbs miss dobbs if you'd like to say hello you do have to unmute yourself no Ms. Dowes has been having a little bit of camera trouble. We're gonna go ahead and keep moving. Um, Ms. Panero Trombley, if you could unmute yourself. Well, welcome everyone. And again, as Ms. Valero said, thank you for uh, bringing us into your home. Um, it's definitely a pleasure to connect, although um, you know not physically in our beautiful building, but um, we're here to help. And hopefully um, tonight we'll be able to answer um, some of your questions and reassure you a little bit about you know this a different start of school. <laughs> I want him to come in here. Thank you. Tell him um, to come here. Okay. Then can I have uh, Ms. Vinueza, if you could um, unmute yourself. This is Ms. Gina Vinueza. She's our president of the PTSA. Hi. Welcome, everyone. And I'm so excited you guys are all here. You're joining us. This is a wonderful school. I think you guys will all have a great time. I wish we could start in person, but I'm hoping that we'll be there soon. So welcome. Thank you, Gina. All right, Ms. Dobbs, is it working? Nope, still nothing. All right, she's gonna rejoin us on from her phone. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Batten here, our athletic director. Hello, everyone. Uh, looking forward to a great year. We got some good news that I'm probably going to be able to give you tonight about the future of athletics in Dade County and Miami Palmetto. So I look forward to seeing what this evening brings for everybody. Wonderful. Okay, while Ms. Dobbs is connecting, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to explain to you how this evening is going to work. We're going to be working the um, the questions through the chat. So instead of having everyone kind of trying to step in and, and unmute themselves and ask a question. Um, if you do have a question, we're gonna ask you to put it in the chat. I'm gonna act as the moderator and I will be um, reading the questions out loud. So don't look in the chat for the answer to the question. We're gonna answer it in person. Um, I'll go ahead and, um, and let you guys know if, um, if that's a question, if that, we don't have an answer to that yet, we'll let you know. Um, if you notice that maybe I've missed your question, go ahead and type it again. That's not a problem. Um, and I will, um, I'll see it pop up again. If you are someone that does need to clarify your question though, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll ask for your name. And um, I'll, I'll say your name out loud. I'll say, so-and-so has the question. Can you unmute yourself? We, have, we need a clarification. And then, then and only then should you unmute yourself and we'll go ahead and, and um, ask that question, all right? So I'm gonna wait to hear it for when Ms. Dobbs is back on. She's slowly connecting. But I'm gonna go, actually, I'll go ahead and get started because the first question is about clubs. So I have a question here. How do we join clubs? That's pretty um, a pretty easy answer to the question. We're going to be having a virtual club fair. 
So um, in the middle of September, probably around September 15th, September 16th, we're going to be uh, debuting our virtual club fair. It is going to be a chance for all the clubs on campus to present a short video, 30 second clip about themselves. And then we will be offering all of our students the opportunity to get on a Zoom with whichever club they want. So all the clubs will be putting Zoom codes online that you will be able to click on. And then in the 30, the, the 30 to 45 minutes that you guys have for lunch, you guys will have the opportunity to go into a Zoom room with officers from that club to ask any questions that you may have. Then we will also have a list of all the clubs and when their first meeting will be with the Zoom code to join that meeting as well. So it'll be pretty easy for you guys to get the opportunity to look at all the clubs we have, look at the videos that they present, see the Zoom codes for the days that you can meet with them in person during lunch, and then eventually go to the very first meeting. Um, all that information will be on the virtual activities office. The virtual activities office, it's what I have kind of have behind me as my background, but the virtual activities office can be found on our website. And all you have to do is click there and information, that office will be ever changing. So check it as much as you would come to the office to ask a question. All right. I'm going to go ahead, Ms. Dobbs. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. Oh. Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share a camera with um, Mr. Batten tonight because we're having a little bit of technical difficulty inside our office. I'm really excited about the school year and I'm looking forward to when we can all get back on campus and get to meet you in person. So I know you have a lot of questions and I want to get to answering those questions. So I'll turn it back over to you, Ms. Valero. Thank you. Miss Dobbs, sorry about the, all those technical difficulties. Okay, so um, one more thing that I do want to mention is that um, we are trying to look for questions this evening that are basically for the good of the group. So if you have individualized questions, things like my child took um, Spanish in seventh and eighth grade, where do they begin? All of that information is kind of a personalized question and it's a one-on-one -on -one question. And we're gonna ask you if you could hold off on those questions and um and send me an email and i can direct you to the person that can answer them um you know that curriculum questions can go directly to your child's counselor um any questions about clubs and activities and extracurricular activities can come to me um, athletics questions can come to mr batten and then we do have um uh, our magnet lead his name is john hayduck if you have any questions about capstone fia or um i prep so if you guys have any individualized questions, we're gonna ask you to hold those. It, it's best to ask questions that are good for the good of the group so we don't stay on here too long. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The first question is, when will the PTSA bookstore be open to purchase books that are needed for class? Gina? So this year our plan is for the required reading is going to be online. Um, I don't have any idea that we're going to change that. It's usually the second week of September, as soon as we get the list from all of the teachers. Um, we will be working with Books and Books again, and we will publish that and have links for parents uh, and students to purchase those things online. Thank you, Gina. Ms. Dobbs, um, can you talk about the bell schedule for this year? Yes, so we're going to be on a block schedule uh, this year. The very first day of school, though, we want you to have an opportunity to get to meet all your teachers. So your first day of school, you'll get you'll go to all six periods. And starting on Tuesday, we'll be on an A, B day. The calendar is on our website. And you'll be taking your classes will be approximately two hours each. And we're going to continue with the block, I would I believe for the remainder of the year. Our bell schedule while we are in phase one, we'll start school at 8.30 in the morning and end at 3.30. And when we come back to campus on, um, during phase two, our day will start back with the regular high school hours, 7.20 to 2.20. Thank you, Ms. Dobbs. All right, there's a question here that some, if, if you know someone that is trying to connect to this meeting and can't get in, tell them that the link is on the, um, on the school's website, on the very front of the school's website, there's the link and there's also a join code and the password if they're trying to get in. So if you're, you know, someone that's having trouble. Um, so when are sports tryouts specifically like soccer, Mr. Batten? 
All right, the most up-to-date information we have right now is on our uh, school website, palmettopanthers.org. Go to athletics, and I have pretty much everything that we have information on up-to-date. The news that it did come out today is it looks like we're going to start being able to condition for some of our fall sports starting in approximately a week to a week and a half. Uh, there needs to be physicals and insurance and grade checks and uh, tryouts, uh, but conditioning might start here in the next week or so. So we're going to uh, put that, I'll be updating the website tomorrow. Uh, with that, once we get the finalized information, but it does look like we are going to start our fall sports conditioning and then our fall sports actual uh, games won't probably be for a, around a month, uh, but that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, as far as uh, varsity and JV, we're not sure how that's going to work out yet, whether we're going to have a full JV season or not, because everything is being adjusted by the FHSAA. So just go to palmettopanthers.org athletics. Thank you. Um, are we supposed to have only six classes like it says on the portal? As far as I'm concerned, Ms. Dobbs, if you wanna handle that. Yes, we, we have six classes. We have, um, we're not an eight period day. So whether we're on block or whether we have six continue, you know, six period bell schedule, what you have are six courses that you're gonna be taking. All right, thank you. How will we know which websites to use? Um, Ms. Dobbs, you wanna talk a little bit about My School Online? Yes, what, what I would suggest for everybody to do if you haven't done it yet, is to go to the dadeschools.net website and go to a Week of Welcome and click on all the different videos that they have. There are some very good videos that'll teach you how to get in. What icon do you have to click in? because what's the biggest difference from how we ended school is that everyone will enter their classes the same way. We're not gonna be using a bunch of different platforms. You'll be able to enter through your student portal. So I really, really recommend for both parents and students, go to the week of welcome, uh, the welcome week, and click on the different videos. You don't have to watch everything, but they have what it looks like to be in secondary, uh, what your day would look like, and it's a very informative video that's very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Dobbs. All right, um, how can I change a class, Ms. Pinero? Hi. Um, okay, on behalf of Student Services, just know that all of the counselors have been working feverishly, uh, trying to answer emails and looking at the requests that have been coming in. Um, we have currently on our school's website a form that you can fill out. Um, you know, just know coming in as a ninth grader, you know, you want to look at your schedule and all of you obviously should have an English one class. You should all have a math class specific to, you know, the math that you may have had already prior to, to ninth grade and, and eighth grade. Um, depending if you had algebra one, you would go to geometry. If you had geometry, you would go to algebra two. Um, if not, you would be starting off with algebra one. All of you should have a science class, again, whether it's physical science or biology or even chemistry, if you're ready for that at this point. And all of you should have specifically world history. And again, these four classes, depending on where you're at academically, would be at your appropriate level. And then you would have two electives. So that's the total of your six periods. For any of you that are looking to or have selected to do the FLVS um, through the virtual learning lab, that is either a first or a six period option. We also have that form online if that's something that you would be interested in. Just please know that when we return to school for phase two to physically have all our classes, for any students that are doing FLVS through that learning lab for first or six period, you would actually stay off campus. Um, you know, you will come in at the beginning of second if you have first period FLVS uh, learning lab, or you would leave campus at the end of fifth period. So as far as you know, any kind of scheduling issues or concerns, you know, please email us. Or if you already know specifically that it's, it's something specifically, you're in, the, you're in the wrong level, you're missing an English class, you, you have the wrong math. These are the kind of things that we want to take care of, um, hopefully by tomorrow. And specifically these core classes, which are very important, we want you to be where you need to be from the very beginning. 
So just try to utilize the form that's on the website or if not just email your counselor directly. Know that coming in as a ninth grader, you now will have an assigned counselor by your last name letters. All of that information is on the school's website. When you go onto the website, you can go to departments and under student services, you'll be able to find um, you know, your assigned counselor. And there's also information there about you know, the subject selections. There's information, the curriculum bulletin, the most updated curriculum bulletin is also there. Parents, you may want to familiarize yourself with some of the sections on that curriculum bulletin. Students, for you as well, um, there's obviously a lot of things that are now applicable as students in high school that were not applicable to you um, in middle school, but you want to be familiar with, you know, your graduation requirements and what's going to be expected of you for the next four years so that obviously you can be very successful. But if at any point you have questions or you're not sure, you know, please email us. Thank you, Amanda. Um, all right, so there is, I just noticed that we do have people that do, are not able to get in because the room is capped. Didn't realize we were gonna have so many people. That's wonderful to see. Please, if you know someone that wasn't able to get into the into the room, um, just let them know this session is being recorded. So we are gonna go ahead and post that um, recording, the link to the recording and the recording itself, the recording itself on YouTube and the link to the recording um, through the school's website. So anyone can watch. And if you missed a question or you wanna see something again, you guys can watch again as well. Um, Okay, so um, how will we be receiving our Zoom schedules? Again, um, like Ms. Dobbs mentioned, everyone should be tuning into the Week of Welcome that gives everyone the, um, the instructions for how you're going to be begin school on Monday morning. Um, and uh, remember that uh, many teachers are going to be using our new platform through Dave Schools. So Zoom might not be the way that they are going to be connecting with you um, for their classes. Ms. Dobbs, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. Well, everybody is going to be using the K-12 program and, they, or, and they're going to be, so the, the curriculum will either be through K-12 or through uh, teams, but you're every, no matter what teacher you have, you will be entering the same way for all your classes. I know that you have your schedules because we've been getting requests for schedule changes or you're able to view them. And once you enter your teachers, a curriculum and your schedule with the links to your classes will be available to you. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, my son is saying that he needs a phone for school. Is that true, Stavs? I, I don't know that you necessarily need a phone. We do use a lot of technology and a lot of times teachers will use different programs like Cahoots or things like that where they use their phones in the class, but it is not an absolute necessity. We can work if a student doesn't have a phone. Okay, um, Ms. Pinero, is English honors the same as pre-AP English? All right, I'm going to answer that exactly how Ms. Spivak, who is our language arts department chair, would want me to answer that. As far as, um, you know, the state of Florida and, um, you know, the state code and the equivalency in terms of a grade point average, yes, they are for a final grade of an A, a B, or a C, you get one additional point added to your grade point average. So an honors English course um, is equal to um, a pre-AP course in, in terms of that equation. Now, as per Ms. Spivak, what is the difference? The difference is that pre-AP course is for that student who wants to really engage themselves just beyond um you know a traditional honors curriculum okay so there this is for the student that is really um willing to go above and beyond that they know that they're probably already at this point going to pursue that college level um advanced placement language arts in 11th grade and that advanced placement literature class their senior year that's not to say that a student who is not in pre-ap um, either in ninth or specifically in 10th grade 
can't then go on to AP language or AP literature as juniors and seniors. They absolutely can if they're hardworking students that have done well and obviously have stepped up. Um, but in terms of the difference on how they're seen on a transcript, they're exactly the same. They're not differentiated. Um, it's the same state code. In terms of the work, the rigor, and what is expected, we're looking at a student that is ultimately trying to eventually pursue uh, you know, an advanced placement track for junior and senior year. Thank you. All right, um, at what time will we be starting school? Um, so we're gonna be starting school during um, this first phase of online learning at 8.30. So your school day will be from 8.30 to 3.30. Um, Ms. Stobbs, I, I, I don't want to speak and, and be wrong. If we move into phase two, that will change? Yes, as soon as we go into phase two and we come back to the school physically, our day will start at 7.20 and end at 2.20. Thank you. All right. So again, if you do have friends that are trying to get on, please remind them that we are recording the session and it will be available on our YouTube and also on the um, with a link on the school's website. Um, do you need a camera for Zoom classes? In order to, for your teachers to be able to take attendance, um, they are asking that all students are on camera so that we can see you. It's the only way that we can take in-person attendance while we are on distance learning. So it is um, in the best interest to have a camera for your Zooms, for your Class Connect sessions. Um, Uh, once the students return in phase two, will they need to bring their laptop slash devices to school? Ms. Tops? Yes, I recommend that they bring them um, because in some occasions, the teacher, the curriculum through K-12 is going to continue even when we go into phase two. We will still have some students that are going to be uh, continuing their classes at home and then students that will be coming on campus and the teacher will be connecting with both groups so they should bring their laptop back in with them so that they may have to do a class online or some of their activities online with their peers who are at home all righty um then I already spoke about the having your cameras on during your sessions um, for attendance, but um, someone asked if do we have to comply with the dress code. I mean, my answer to that is always yes. <laughs> Ms. Dobbs, do you want to take that? All right, so we are not a uniform school, but we do expect you to be dressed appropriately. So when you do come into class, don't have on your pajamas, have, something, you know, something nice on you. You don't have to get dressed up, but you do have to be dressed appropriately for class. Okay. Um, how, how, how do the students receive their classes? Okay, I think we, we spoke about that to make sure that you're, you check into week of welcome so you know how to log in on that Monday morning. Um, same question. Same question. Yesterday's videos that were on were the best for new parents on MDCPS. We're glad to hear that. We're glad you're taking advantage of week of welcome. Um, will we be staying in my school online during the second phase? Will you keep the same teachers as my school online phase one? So right now, the way that we have all the students scheduled there are students who have chosen as soon as we go into phase two, they want to come back physically to school. So they've been scheduled into classes that are, that are labeled physical. And then the students that are, um, want to remain at home during phase two are my school online. Um, you will remain with the same teachers. And then when we get into phase three, when everybody comes back on campus, we may have to make some adjustments to the schedules for the students who have chosen to stay at home if the classes are too large. But right now, um, you're going to have the same teacher. Okay, what about the people who said they won't be going back to school in the survey they took in July? Can they change their choice once school opens back up? 
right now the district is holding that at least for the first quarter you remain with your choice i don't know if that'll change if we especially if we come back to school uh faster than we anticipated but for right now the district is holding that at least for the first quarter that you remain with your choice thank you um what if there's an international student and they don't want to take esol I heard there's a test you have to take. Where can you take that? Ms. Pinero? Yes, um, as far as, you know, students that are coming in, whether they're international or even students, when you first register, there's a, a series of questions that you answer. And if in any of those questions in survey, you answer, and, and one of them to give you an example is like, you know, um, is there another language other than English that's your, your spoken language or your first language or something like that? So depending on that survey, not just, in, because you're an international student, um, you would have to take um, the ESOL exam. And that's something that is done through, um, you know, the, the, um, the department. Ms. Um, Sanin is one of our teachers in that department, and she works very closely with the parents. And um, once the students do get tested, or depending on where they're at with their levels, there's then an educational plan that is worked with those students and that follows them in terms of their um, curriculum and their level. And depending on the testing, they are tested once a year. And depending on the testing, um, as they move up through the testing levels, their, their schedules are changed and, and adapted you know, to their appropriate levels. And then once they test out, or if they score out based on the FSA ELA exam, once they take that, if they pass that, they would then automatically be taken out of the, um, the, these courses and go into a regular English or even an honors English class. Thank you, Ms. Panero. Is the homework policy um, as far as time the same in person as for my school online? I'm gonna, the, the homework policy is going to, it remains the same no matter what schooling we go to. Our teachers have been asked they're always asked not to give out assignments that don't have a purpose. Everything that, that students are assigned to do has to have some kind of a purpose. And if you take courses, advanced, especially honors and advanced placement courses, you may have more work than if you were in a regular class because the information that you're covering and you're studying um, is it's going to be at a higher level. So you need to be very cognizant of the schedule that you pick and make sure that you uh, pick something that you can handle and not get overwhelmed. So we do not give out assignments for the sake of assignments and students should not be overwhelmed with frivolous work that, that has no meaning. Okay, in prep for phase two return to campus, is there a campus map to help students navigate to their rooms? Yes, and um, we're probably going to recommend, um, we will probably, what we'll do is we'll film another tour, less of a give you information as well tour and more of a this is how you get through the campus tour um, before we come back in phase two so that you all are um, understanding. Um, and then also know the new um, spots on campus because you know things have changed as we go through construction. So we'll definitely, plan another tour and also create a map to give to everyone. Um, when will my school online be available for students? On Monday. The teachers right now, it's being rolled out to all the teachers. It started, teachers started receiving the platform yesterday so that they could actually work within their own classes. Um, the students will have it on Monday and they will spend the first week of school uh, meeting with their teachers and working on programs that, that is going to teach them how to navigate the platform uh, correctly. So they will have a 20 hour module that they will work through for the first week of school with their class with their teachers. Okay, um, does the PTSA Ms. Valero, I'm yes. sorry, can I add something in reference to what Ms. Dobbs said and, and yes. scheduling? Um, just please know that if you do request a schedule change that it's very important that you go back and you check your portal um, just so that you know when you log in there that you know what the new class is going to be and, and where you're expected to to be as far as um, you know if you had a change in schedule okay also know 
that, you know, obviously tomorrow will be a, a cutoff time for there to be what would be a quote unquote rollover period for schedule changes. So if you do email us over the weekend, um, you know, those schedule changes will not be in the system for Monday morning. Um, so it's very, very important that you realize that because we don't want you to go in logging in expecting that you would have had a schedule change or you would be in a certain class and, and it's just not going to happen because we won't be able, whatever, if we work on something, it won't roll over until the, until Monday. So whatever schedule changes are not in by tomorrow, then, you know, we would have to wait till Monday to work on those. Um, and then that's what would be reflected when you log in to see where you need to go and who your teachers are and, and where you're signing in. Okay. All right. Um, uh, does the PTSA have student representatives? Um, yes, there are student representatives through student council. I don't know if Ms. Vinueza wants to talk about this a little bit. Yeah, so um, the student council senators, which are elected every year um, by the fellow students and Ms. Valero, um, through student council, there, there are lots of positions available, but the one that is the student representatives for PTSA also are the student representatives for ESAP, which is the uh, Educational Excellence School. I, I can't remember the whole thing, Ms. Jobs, but um, <laughs> the, the committee the council um, that includes school administrators, teachers, and we talk about the school improvement plan, which is uh, looks at how our school performance is and what our goals are for that year. Um, so it, it's a very important position. And then the, the student uh, representatives for Senate, Senate that are also the PTSA representatives are part of our PTSA, the senior on the Senate, because usually they choose at least four representatives. Um, the senior is the uh, voting member on board and everyone else is alternate. So they're all encouraged to come to the board meetings and be full participants and vote on everything as well as in the general meetings, all, all of the representatives and actually any of you students who join the PTA. And I would encourage all of you to do that with your parents to not just have your parents sign up, but to also have everyone in your family sign up. Students are voting members and it is really important that we hear from you. So um, I know that the PTSA senior student this year um, is also on newspaper and she is hoping to um, do a column um, monthly in the student newspaper to update all of you on the issues that are being discussed in ESAC as well as PTSA. And I would encourage you to contact any of the four representatives with any concerns you have or any issues that you'd like to have them bring up for you at the board meetings and then to attend the um, PTSA meetings. I know during the year when we go to school, sometimes it's more difficult to attend those meetings because you are often in classes. Um, but at this time, because we're online, I'm planning to have all of the, um, the PTSA general meetings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So any of you who are members will be sending out the link on our Facebook page and Instagram page, as well as in our weekly newsletters. So I encourage any of you to join with your uh, families and to watch the meetings and to vote on things and to be involved because um, as you all know, watching the news and everything going on in our country, uh, voting and having a voice is extremely important and especially, especially in high school. And I can say that uh, Ms. Valero does an amazing job. All of our administrators, Ms. Ms. Dobbs and, and our athletics, I mean, you guys really are the voice of the school. And you really are the leaders of the school. And it, it's really your opportunity to take that um, position and really find your voice and, and make a difference in your school. We, we really do listen to you. And, and it's, it's amazing to see the involvement and see the growth that happens over these four years. So uh, I encourage all of you to join and participate. And next year when we have the Senate uh, um, applications again, which is usually in the springtime, I would say any of you that are interested, there's lots of options available to you. And I would say to uh, apply for all of those and, and get involved right away. Thank you. All right, will students complete their asynchronous lessons during supervised class time or on their own? The, the teachers are going to be logged in and they're going to be giving both um, direct instruction and then remain online while students either work in breakout rooms in small groups 
because they can go in and pop into the different groups to work with you know the different the different individual groups and they will also be available to ask questions so the teachers will be on uh, the program with them they just not, may not be actively teaching for the whole two hours but they will be there to assist and to go into small group sessions um, the electronic devices ran out yesterday. We're on a waiting list. Will we have a device by Monday? Uh, I hate to say that probably not. Uh, we, the district is aware of what the different schools need. And right now our waiting list uh, shot up today to, I think we have 50 people on the waiting list right now. So we are waiting to see if the district is able to provide us with additional uh, devices, but I know that almost every school is in need of devices at this time. Um, after attendance, can we turn off the camera? We would like for you to be actively engaged and we would like to support you as a student. So we ask that our teachers be actively engaged and that you are too. So, you know, if you need to turn the camera off for a moment, um, that might be okay. But for the most part, we want to see you on the camera so that we can work with you and, and see if you need assistance. Okay. Um, it, there's a question here about it's not clear on the week of welcome. Can you please explain a little bit? Um, it's, if someone, the person that wrote that question, can you elaborate? Um, on the question chat again on what it is that isn't clear. I'm gonna keep going. Um, once we move into phase two, do you have to be in school if you still feel uncomfortable about COVID numbers and are an at-risk person? My parents initially said yes to return to school but are not sure about the decision. Um, I'm gonna say that at the time when we actually come in for phase two, if you do have a serious concern, then we'll have to have a conversation. But I do know that because it was been such a, it was such a difficult balancing act trying to uh, schedule everyone into their choice that the district is asking that you stick to your choice for the first quarter. And during phase two, if you have an FLVS course first period, is there enough time to go to second period? Pretty sure that that's a yes. Well, <laughs> Remember what I said earlier, if you have an FLVS course as part of your schedule, it's either going to be a first period course or a six period course, which means that you would have to a lot enough time to be driven to school to get here in time to attend your second period class. You are not physically going to be in the building for first period FLVS learning lab nor will you be in the building for six periods. So you would definitely have to have transportation that would bring you into the building at that later time in, in time to start second period. And you would have to have transportation um, to be picked up from the school at the end of fifth period, okay? Keep in mind also that the deadlines of completion dates for Florida Virtual are a little different than our actual semesters. So if you happen to be one of those students that, you know, you don't work well independently or you tend to procrastinate a little bit, um, FLVS, the route of FLVS may not be the best thing for you because their semesters are going to end a little bit earlier than our school semesters. Um, for those of you that work well independently, you like this online learning, um, you know, you feel that you get a lot out of it and you just enjoy having that time to yourself, then FLVS first or sixth period is absolutely a wonderful opportunity for you. Um, do we get homework on the first day? I, um, I believe that we are focusing on the My School Online learning in the first week. So your teachers have been instructed to give you asynchronous time to be working on your My School Online um, and that the actual curriculum based work that's going to be done in each of your classes will be starting the week of September 8th. Am I correct, Ms. Dobbs? I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Valera, can you repeat the last thing you just said? That the curriculum based work for each individual class will begin the week of September 8th. That's correct, during the second week of school. Um, how will IEP accommodations be handled? 
The teachers are all going to receive um, a copy of the accommodations that the student needs. I do understand that it's different than if we were physically at school, uh, but we will meet if the student needs additional time to complete a task, if the student needs maybe additional reminders to keep on task we should be able to meet the accommodations of the student and and they will be the teachers will be receiving those accommodations whether you have an iep or a 504 plan um is there a platform to sign up for communication i.e emails or apps that's actually a wonderful question i'm glad someone asked that um there is currently your opening of schools materials um has is now online um, if you go to our school's Instagram account, also on our Facebook page, I'm going to give all of that out in a second, you can click on the links to be able to go to fill out all those opening of schools documents. Those opening of schools documents are going to give us all the information we need, contact phone numbers, contact emails, and things like that to be able for us to send out information as we need. So any important information that needs to go out can go home on a um, on a phone call, a mass phone call to all of our parents. Um, emails, there will be a weekly email newsletter from the Office of Student Activities that will go out to everyone, parents and students, with basic information that we think that you all should know. The PTSA also, I'm gonna give Gina the floor a little bit to talk about the PTSA um, communication. Um, and then the best way to stay in contact um, as much as possible on the spot would be through our social media. So we have our two Instagram accounts for Palmetto, Palmetto SHS and MPSH activities that are constantly updating. We have our school's Facebook page for Miami Palmetto Senior, um, and we do have a Twitter account as well through MPSH activities. All of that can be found in the virtual activities office. There is links to all of our social media. Um, so I would highly recommend that every student and every parent with social media access follow all those accounts. Gina? Yeah, I would say the same thing as well. PTSA has Instagram, Facebook, and we have a newsletter. If you go to our website, which is um, palmettoptsa.org, um, you can sign up for our weekly newsletters. Our communication chair emails all the teachers and administrators every week to get updates from them. And then we send a weekly uh, newsletter out to all of the families that have signed up. And it includes any upcoming dates, important events, uh, announcements, and then everything is updated regularly, probably more in real time, like Ms. Valero said, on our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter page. Um, so I think that that's the quickest way to get in touch with us. Um, and all of our emails, all of our cell phone numbers for all the PTA contacts are on our website as well. And you can reach us through that or through uh, a private message on Facebook as well. All right, um, when will school construction be finished? Well, uh, on a positive note, since we have been home since March, uh, construction has actually been able to speed up since we don't have students and staff on campus. Um, our newest buildings that are under construction right now, we should be moving into those uh, probably in January. They should be done in December. So that'll, that'll complete our new cafeteria, our black box theater, our visual and performing arts wing. Um, basketball courts might come in the phase afterwards, our outdoor courts, but we're gonna get all those new buildings and access to them uh, in January. Yay. Yeah. Amazing. So will we be counted absent if there's a technology problem? Um, if you're not able to get in, so I'm going to say if you have a technology problem, then you're probably not able to send in an admit to Miss Lane. Your next best option is to call the school. All the clerical are working and admin, they're all here on campus. So if you do have a tech problem, you need to call and check in and let us know that you're having a problem. For example, you know, you, there's bad weather and you lose electricity or your Comcast goes out. You know, you could have those issues do happen occasionally and um, you just need to call and let us know. Communication is key. 
If you're having a problem, let us know so that we can assist you. All right, um, how will student council elections work virtually? Well, we've actually been virtual with all our elections for a while now. We do them through a, um, a, a Google form. However, um, that is gonna change a little bit. We're gonna have a little bit of a policy change when it comes to that, since you guys are not gonna be voting virtually in front of us, like bringing your ID and showing it to us. So there will be um, a couple of changes, nothing drastic, but um, we're going to go over the, all the, um, the requirements for elections um, when I do uh, an elections um, Zoom session with question and answer for any of the students that are interested in running for officers of the class of 2024. And then we'll explain how the elections are going to work so that everyone um, you know, is, uh, feels good about the security of the elections. What we want to make sure is that everything is very secure. Um, um, okay, so here we have it again that the Week of Welcome website is not clear. Do we, can someone go into depth on how I join my classes on Monday? Okay, I'm going to see if you can see something on my phone because there are a couple of videos that I watched and, and unless you've seen them, but they do explain. So when you log into the Week of Welcome, there are um, little boxes with different dates. If you go into Tuesday's date, I believe, and open expand that and look for the secondary, a day in the life of a secondary student. And it, this is what you're gonna be looking for. Click on this and this walks you right through what you need, what your day is going to look like. In addition to that, if you do have issues navigating your portal because you're new to our school system and you're really not accustomed to that, I would suggest that you also review the student portal navigation and accessing my school online, which is also in that area. And I would definitely look at those videos. There are some very worthwhile, it'll help make you feel more comfortable as to what you're gonna see which boxes you have to click on and how you're going to access your courses. All right. Um, is Mr. Batten still there? Yes. There's a question about when will applications for sports be available? I'm sure he means the packet. Okay. I'm actually working on the website as we speak. Uh, for junior varsity sports, for fall June junior varsity sports, it is TBA to be announced. We don't know what's happening with junior varsity sports at this time. For varsity sports, uh, we are going to start accepting physicals. I'm, I'm kind of reading it at the same time. Birth certificates, the four NFH uh, safety courses, and all that. We're going to start in writing insurance starting on Monday for varsity football. For cross country and Varsity Girls Volleyball, we are going to start uh, on September 8th, Tuesday. There's no school There's no school Monday, so we'll start Tuesday, September 8th at from 3.30 to 5 p.m. in the athletic office. Uh, this is only for conditioning. It is not for the seasons yet. We do not have a season start date for anything yet. We just have permission to start conditioning. Uh, what that means to new kids, to ninth graders or new to the building or new to the school is preseason conditioning. And if you're unsure whether you're a varsity or junior varsity athlete, uh, send me an email and I can discuss it. I can call you and we can discuss what's going on, but we don't know the future of everything yet. And all this information I'm giving you came out approximately three hours ago. So we're still digesting some of it and trying to figure it out but I am updating the website as we speak, as I'm listening to you all. So palmettopanthers.org, uh, then go to athletics and it's right there. Thank you. All right. If my schedule was changed by an assistant principal yesterday, it doesn't reflect on my portal. Is there a lag in the system? Should I be worried? Okay, um, when we put in a schedule, when we do a schedule change, there is a rollover period. It's usually 24 hours. If the schedule change was done yesterday, you should have been able to see that in your portal today. Um, if it's not there, then I would go ahead and contact um, your counselor just so that they can look at it and, and see what has happened. This is why I'm, I explained earlier that 
you know, if you put in a request um, tomorrow, five o'clock is basically the, the deadline for the changes that we would have to make. So if you're submitting a schedule change request form tomorrow in the late afternoon, um, it's probably not going to be uh, ready for you on Monday morning because Friday will roll over into Saturday. Those changes will be seen on Saturday. And then whatever gets worked on over the weekend, um, that's obviously not going to roll over. Um, it's not going to get worked on through the system. So it's very important that if there is something wrong with your schedule, that's why I, I, you know, I took the time earlier to explain what your schedule should look like. Like I said, as incoming ninth graders, you should have an English class, a math class, a physical science or, or biology or chemistry class, and you should have a world history class. And then your two electives. If you find that you're missing a period, if you find that you have two of the same thing, if you completed, um, let's say you completed algebra one and you're rescheduled into algebra one, that's obviously something we want to work on. Um, if you're in the same um, cl a class that, you know, it's absolutely something that, you know, is a wrong class. It doesn't sound like it's the right level for you for a ninth grader, you know, like uh, advanced placement economics or government or something like that. You know, those are the kind of things that we definitely want you to submit a form for because we want to make sure that we take care of those as soon as possible. But yes, it's a 24 hour rollover. If you're not seeing it and you're certain that the schedule change was done, that you have, that you had received confirmation through email, yes, it's done, you know, watch for it, but it didn't happen. Um, it's important that you reach out and you let us know. Sometimes there is a little bit of a glitch between the scheduling system that we work on and the actual system that would then roll over and generate um, the information onto your portal, and it's just a little tweaking on our end, but we can take care of that. But definitely communicate with us and let us know, let your counselor know, send them an email. All right. um, Ms. Valero, give me a second. I just want to add a, a little something. If an administrator is helping you with your, with your schedule, they had a conversation with you, more than likely they're not doing it during the typical working hours like a counselor would where we roll over at five o'clock. We're usually doing it in the evening. So if you spoke to him and he got to your schedule change or the correction that needed to be made last night, check one more time tomorrow before you contact your counselor um, because more than likely it'll be there then the following day because we are working late into the night and we do miss the rollover. So it takes more than a day for that to happen. Thank you, Ms. Dobbs. All right, so the next few are actually about student council. Um, uh, do we have to run for student council secretary to become a PTSA representative? No, so basically we, the student council is comprised of the student council board. Then there, are, there is separate boards for each class. So now 2021, 22, 23, and now 24 coming on in. And then we have the student council Senate, which are comprised of multiple different grade levels. The Senate, applies for Senate in the spring, the late spring, usually between May and June. The student council elections take place in usually February and or March. Um, and then the class that includes student council elections and class officers. And then the class of the freshman class that is coming in, their elections take place in September. So if you're interested in being a student representative on the PTSA, which is one of the many Senate positions, then you would apply for that position in May to be in the following year's Senate. So no freshmen are sitting on Senate. It's always sophomores, juniors, and seniors. If you are interested in running for your class office this year, so you have the opportunity to run for a freshman class president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer, those, um, those elections take place now coming up in September. We will, gen we will most likely be doing that in mid-September to later September um, because we are looking for an organized and um, trustworthy uh, way of doing the elections. But generally, you can expect that after the um, Labor Day weekend, we'll have all the information on when the elections will take place and how you apply to run for office. If you're running for president, vice president, or secretary, you're running for office, meaning your classmates are going to vote for you. And if you are interested in being treasurer, you apply with me, your class sponsor, and I will run interviews and interview you guys and then appoint that position. All right, so that's, I think I covered the three questions 
that were asked about student council. So look for those elections mid to late September. Ms. Valero, can I just add one thing? Yes. To that too? Because I had um, experience personally as a parent, a uh, student who ran for one of those offices in a freshman and sophomore year and was not elected or appointed to those offices. Um, but she was very active in cabinet, which is another way that you get active in, in student council. So don't be discouraged uh, if you don't get elected or appointed to those positions. There's still a lot of opportunity to get involved. And Ms. Valera, you can, you can share that. Yes, I'm so glad you said that because I forgot. Yes, once we have our elections and the, the officers have been um, appointed, then what will happen is we will open up our cabinet application process and the application is basically, do you want to be on cabinet? Great, you're in. Um, and so we, the cabinet are the students that advise the officers on everything that we're going to be doing throughout the year. So um, fundraising ideas, t-shirt ideas, field trips, things that we might want to do together as a class. And a lot of times the cabinet members then do such hard, amazing work in, those, in that first year that they will run for office or apply for Senate and be almost guaranteed a spot because of all the work that they did. So then they can move forward in their, um, in their hopes and, and ambitions for student council and whatever that may be. So there's a lot of work that can be done and a lot of really fun things that we do. We really get to know each other well and we kind of, you know, you become the heartbeat of your class. So I cannot recommend enough that if you do not get a position that you ran for that you apply for cabinet. Um, may, I, may I ask a question? Oh, sure. Yes, hi, we just logged in. We're trying to log in for the last 45 minutes. Okay, so if you have a question, the questions are in the chat. You type it in the chat. That's how we're doing everything. Well, my question is, is there a recording of what yes. discussed? Yes, yes, and now we're gonna go over that again. Yes, this whole thing has been recorded and will be on our school's website. The link will be on the website. Um, so, uh, let me get back to the questions. Um, uh, our clubs happening this year. How do we get involved? Yes, um, we are still having our clubs. Um, and remember, like, um, for those of you that may not have heard at the start of the meeting, uh, we're going to be having a club fair in the middle of September where you can get all the information that you need about each club. There will be videos posted from the clubs and um, an opportunity to join a Zoom to ask questions of the specific club officers of which you're interested in. We will also have a link with all the information about when the clubs are meeting and those um, uh, Zoom or whatever platform they're using to meet the, um, the address to join those first club meetings that'll take place between September and October. Um, when do ninth graders join NHS? That's a great question that I actually don't have the answer for. I believe that that starts in sophomore year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that the applications are, are from sophomore year on for NHS. I don't believe ninth graders um, can join National Honor Society. If, you're, if you want a better answer to that question, um, you can email their sponsor. Her name is Lisa Mallard. Um, you can find her information on the website and uh, she has um, the information there that you would need if you have a more specific question. Um, I have a question, how are we going to do labs for science classes like biology and chemistry? Like, I believe that's gonna be up to each individual teacher and how they do that. Well, we'll be doing virtual labs like gizmos while we're online. And once we get back to campus, then teachers can do traditional labs. But they'll do, that. you can complete virtual labs and gizmo labs while you're working online. What is asynchronous time? You wouldn't believe how many teachers also had that question this week. Asynchronous time means time on your own to do a complete the, the task. So when we're talking about the asynchronous learning that you're gonna be doing with my school online, that means on your own. Um, I saw uh, Elizabeth, a couple yes. questions that popped up. Um, you will not be picking up books. 
uh, for, for work right now, your curriculum will be built into the K-12 or into teams. Your teachers will provide you with that. So you will not need to pick up physical books while, we're, while we are working online. And the schedule will be on our website for A and B day. We are gonna start the first day of school with all six periods and then go into block the following day on Tuesday and then we'll start. But we do have the full schedule on our website so that you can see it for the entire um, first quarter. Just so everyone knows, we are starting to run a little long. I am going and seeing questions that are a little bit geared towards an individual. If I do skip that question and you, and you don't know how to get it answered, please send me an email and I'll forward it to the person that can answer it for you. So I'm trying to just um, find the questions that have to do with, um, you know, the good of the group. Um, do we get a syllabus when we start the first stage of school on the first day of school? Your teachers have been given what we've told them to do is to use the first half hour of, of school of your class to introduce themselves, um, talk about the class the expectations, share the syllabus with you and then give students an opportunity to work on the module for K-12 that's required for the first week. So the students will be given the time that they need to work while they are in class on the module, but each teacher will take time to, to talk about class and talk about the syllabus and expectations as well. If I'm absent and need to send a note from the doctor's office, how do I do that? We are going to have all admits are going to be done online through our website. It's going to be really easy and you're going to be able to um, request your admit and take a picture of your note and send it. It'll go directly to attendance. Miss Lane will then complete your admit and um, update your attendance and forward your admit to all your teachers. How do we get emails from the school? Um, I believe that's going to be the email that you put into the opening of school's uh, materials. Yeah, I would, I'm going to suggest something. Not only do you have to um, fill an updated uh, student information card with all your phone numbers, but I would also go into your parent portal and update your phone number and add your email address. Because I know that every time we make a, a Connect Ed call home, we usually will pair that with an email. So if you do miss the call or if there was too much information or was too quick, you're able to refer to the email and it's a great, it's a great way for us to be able to communicate with parents. Um, <laughs> this question makes me giggle. I don't, I hope we're not crushing dreams. Could there be a hockey team, Mr. Batten? <laughs> uh, no, there cannot be. First off, needed has to be an approved FHSA sport, which hockey is not at this time, and it must be adopted by the state and the local GMAC administration. Sorry. <laughs> um, is there a way for parents to check what they picked on the survey for virtual or face-to-face -face if they don't remember? I'm not 100% sure if on the student portal it identifies how they, what they selected. What I would say is if you are not sure what you picked, if you drop me a quick email with your student name, I can take a look at it and just send it right back to you so that you know whether you picked um, my school online or physical back at on campus during phase two. Gina, uh, do, are the, does the bookstore, the virtual bookstore that PTSA is gonna have, do they sell the AP world history books that are required? No, the, the uh, AMSCO book and the, um, I think it's the, the History of the World in Six Glasses or the two required books, I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe so. I believe that uh, Miss Farkas sent the link to purchase those two books because those are needed right away at the beginning of the year. However, um, our virtual bookstore will provide other AP textbooks that the, that the teachers give us that are needed maybe not right at the beginning of the year. Is day one starting with odds or evens? You will have all your teachers, all six periods on day one, and then we will start the block scheduling on Tuesday the next day. Um, the, no, they, do we need to pick up any books at school, Ms. Dobbs? 
No, we're, we're not going to be issuing books while we're learning at home. Um, you will be able to get everything either digitally or the teachers will provide you with what you need. Ms. Pinero, can electives be switched? Sorry, there's like a little bit of a lag in my on my computer to unmute myself. Well, I'll say this, anything is possible. Some things are highly unlikely. <laughs> um, right now, like I said, the, the main focus for us is to make sure that everyone is everyone's schedule is correct in terms of their core classes, um, that nothing is repeated. Um, as far as you know, electives, keep in mind that we're it's almost picture like a, a 2800 piece puzzle, and we're trying to get all these little pieces to fit. Um, so it's, it's a tremendous task, um, you know, on behalf of all of the counselors, the administrators, we've been working on this, um, you know, throughout, we want to make sure obviously that you have the very best schedule that you would be happy with. Um, we can always take a look at it. If it works with the numbers, um, you know, if it, if it helps to alleviate a, a large class, if it's an elective where we still have a little bit of room, absolutely we will try to accommodate you and work with you i will say this we are setting a cutoff date and that date is september 15th because we need to have like a pause in the schedule to be able to see where everybody's at without there being any movement so that if anything else needs to be leveled out and we need to look at things the administration has an opportunity to look at that and then we pick up and start working again but it's very important, especially for those of you that, you know, are in an AP course, that you give that course an opportunity and not try to, to, to bail out because you might find that it's a little too difficult. If you are in an elective that you're thinking, oh, this might not work, give yourself a chance. Be open to a new experience. Be open to, to learning possibly something new. You never know, um, you know, where that interest may go. Um, so just, you know, be flexible with, with yourself, be f a little flexible with us as well. Yes, we can look at your elective request, elective change request. Um, just know that, you know, we're sitting pretty tight with those puzzle pieces. Um, and, and um, you know, we want to make sure that we have everyone in place and that we've taken care of, especially the core things and, and the errors that may need to be fixed by September 15th. Um, so if you are going to put in a request, if you're going to fill out that form, whether it's to go into FLVS first or sixth period, um, or whether it's, you know, something within the school that you do that by September 15th. I saw earlier that someone had asked if they had FLVS first period, what would happen during the block on, you know, like on the day where you start with second period. Obviously, you would need to come to school once we're back physically at the start of the school day for that second period. So you would only be coming in late to school on those A days where you have the first period of FLVS elective, okay? okay. So anything is possible. <laughs> um, again, about the link for this video, this video's link will be on our school's website and it'll be on our YouTube uh, through MPSH activities. Um, if we are going into block schedule, does that mean we will have three classes a day? Yes. Um, will there be a dance team this year? We still do have our variations team. They're meeting virtually, so there's only so much that they can be doing during the virtual time, but our variations dance team will continue to have a chorus, be a performing group, um, just virtually at first. Um, uh, we are... Hold on, I'm skipping through. Um, just going through repeated questions. Someone said that both AP books mentioned are on, available on Amazon. Thanks for that tip. Um, remember block scheduling will not take place on Monday. Monday will be on the full day schedule, all six classes. Um, Um, our personal fitness and fitness lifestyle, the same class. 
Absolutely not. They're actually two very different um, required courses for those students who, uh, in order to graduate with a standard 24 credit diploma, you have to have that semester half credit of personal fitness and the other semester, the other half credit of fitness lifestyle design. At our school, you, would, you can take personal fitness and what we do pair with that is the fitness lifestyle design. For those students who just love you know, physical education, we also offer team sports, we offer weight training. Um, so there's other opportunities to fulfill that requirement, not just you know, through that one track. Every student does have to have personal fitness and another half credit of a PE. Um, for those students who are not interested in taking um, PE at school, you can absolutely sign up for that through Florida Virtual and you would specifically have to take personal fitness, as I said, and fitness lifestyle design. Our district does not allow us to approve outdoor education nor HOPE, which are two other um, physical PE-like courses, but we're not allowed to approve those through the district, okay? Now, for those students who plan on participating in two seasons of a sport, this does not have to be a varsity sport, just two seasons of any sport. It could be the same sport, two different sports. We're able to waive this entire requirement for those students um, who are part of our marching band or are on our dance uh, drill team. We can waive the PE half. We cannot waive the personal fitness half. So then you would have to take that class through Florida Virtual or be willing to do the full um, course of the two halves within the school year, okay? Thank you. Um, is Tuesday the block schedule A or B? That's gonna be an A day. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions, a lot of individualized questions about AP World History. So um, for AP World History, I would, recommend that you email um, either Ms. Farkas. Is, am I missing an AP World History teacher, Ms. Dobbs, beyond Ms. Farkas? No, no? it's just okay. Ms. So I would email uh, Ms. Julianne Farkas with any of these questions that you have about the books, about, about the different things that are required, because she can better answer those questions for you. Is it too late to join variations or cheerleading? Um, those questions also can be um, geared to the specific coach or to the teacher. The um, teacher for uh, variations, our dance teacher's name is Miss Bally Logan. You can find her email online uh, through our website. And the sponsor in charge of cheerleading um, is going to be Miss Lakin Darst. And you can um, uh, send any questions about cheerleading or, or future cheerleading to her as well. Um, Hi, Ms. Valero, can I just yeah. jump in real quick about yeah. Ms. Farkas's world history? I know it was also capped like this meeting. Um, she did send PTSA her, her presentation, and we have posted it on our Facebook page. So if you go to that, it was posted just two hours ago, um, the Google documents with all of the slides and a lot of information is on there. So if anybody missed Ms. Farkas's um, Q&A today and the intro to world history, AP world history yesterday, you can go to the PTSA Facebook page and pull up all the slides and information there. So, um, so what's an A day, what's a B day? A day is periods one, three, five. B day is periods two, four, six. And the, and the days take turns. A, a day, then B day. A day, then B day. B is a Friday, then Monday's an A day. So. They just take turns. Um, can a teacher assign an assignment to be due on a day that is not their day? For example, the assignment is due on a B day, but there's classes on an A day. I know that block scheduling is new to us because we've always been a traditional six period bell school. Um, you're typically what happens in block, you're giving your assignment and it's usually due. If it's a long term assignment, you're given a date in advance and it, otherwise you turn in your work the next time you're in class. So that is something that um, your teachers are going to have to get used to as well because they're used to teaching six periods. The reason and I saw one of the questions, why are we doing block? Honestly, so that when we're back on campus to minimize student movement. Um, 
in between classes and how many different groups of students teachers have during the day. So that was the biggest reason for the district moving all schools um, onto block. Will we remain in block after this year? That I can't answer. We'll have to make a decision and see how it works for us. But for now, we will be on block. Um, what do you do if your My School Online is not on your portal? Ms. Dobbs, you mentioned that it was going to be there on Monday. Yeah, it's rolling out even for students and some students may already have it and not all even like some of our teachers have their access and some are getting it tomorrow. So it is a rolling it's rolling out as we speak. So you, you will have access. I really recommend watching some of the videos on the week of welcome. It'll make you feel better and you'll see what you're trying to look for on your portal as well. Um, and then how about parking on campus? Um, we have not um, put out all the information for parking on campus. Generally, our campus parking, um, when we do return into, um, um, into phase two, will be, we'll start with seniors. Usually our, our method is to start with seniors, then to move on to juniors. And then if there's still parking space left, then we'll open it up to anyone else with the driver's license. So all the information will eventually go online when we're ready to start selling parking. Um, uh, how, when do we get our school IDs? We'll probably issue IDs um, once we get back on campus. Uh, we normally have our school pictures are taken and then uh, they produce for us IDs for all the students. And obviously we won't be taking pictures until we get back on campus. But as soon as we do, then that, that's when we'll start issuing them, the brand new ones. Um, again, we have um, another question about the if we picked online only, can we still join school when we move into phase two? Um, Ms. Dobbs, sorry, if you could just clarify that again. I will. The, the district, it, in order to schedule everyone, it's been a bit of a challenge to make sure that we can meet the needs of all the students, whether they decided to stay at home when we get to phase two or whether they decided to come back to school. So the district is asking for no changes to be done for the first quarter of school. Okay, and then um, how will the school do a yearbook without school pictures? Well, we're hoping to come back in phase two and be able to take our school pictures. Um, the seniors have been taking their portraits at Foxmar already, so we're hoping that we, you guys will get to take your pictures as well. Um, and we'll have a great plan for social distancing once we're back on campus. And I'm sure that Foxmar, our photogra uh, photography company will have everything that they need to make sure that everyone is safe and still allowed to take their school pictures. I do know that the, the um, yearbook staff has been working already on the yearbook, taking photos of everything that they possibly can that would make um, great photography for the yearbook. So you'll have a yearbook. Um, um, Valero, yeah. there's a question that keeps popping up about EOC. So just um, very quickly, when we do get back on campus, I believe the first test that we are going to have our students take, and right now I believe it's scheduled for October, I do not have the testing calendar in front of me, is the 10th grade FSA, if I remember correctly. So I believe that in October, when we come back in, and, and that's not to say that we are definitely coming back October, we could be coming back in earlier. Um, but it is scheduled for us when we return to take the FSA and then we'll, we will be scheduling the EOCs that the students need to take that are possible retakes um, from last year. So there is a calendar and if you do want to see what, what we do have scheduled, you can go to the testing calendar on dateschools.net and it is out there and it does delineate which I'm sure it has to be a bit fluid in the sense if we're not back on campus, it would be difficult to do the test, but there is a testing calendar already out for you to view. Um, thank you, Ms. Dobbs. I'm sorry that I missed that. Um, uh, finally, there was a question. Oh, how will students that choose online take their school pictures? I don't, we don't have an answer to that yet. I don't think so. I haven't heard one. Um, I'm sure that something will be 
that they'll figure something out. <laughs> but um, as of right now, we don't have the answer to that question. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remind everyone that this entire presentation is going to be online, not in the next five minutes. So please don't tell anyone to, to just check. It takes a very long time to render. It might have to render overnight. Um, but I am going to go ahead, download this video and put it online. Um, remember that um, any sort of question that you guys may have about your schedule, your curriculum, your, your um, changes that you might ha need to make, you should send those to your individual counselor. Ms. Panero, can you remind them how their counselors are divvied up? Okay, so just, and I'll, and I'll tell you specifically, for those of you whose um, last names begin with the last, last, for those of you whose last name begin with the letter A and T through Z, Miss King, Miss Angela King will be your counselor. For those of you whose last name letters are um, E through J, you belong to me, Miss Pinero Trombley, so I will be your counselor. Those of you that are K through O, you belong to Ms. Cheryl Concepcion. And those of you that are P through S, um, you belong to Ms. Lisa Mallard. For those of you whose last name letters um, are B through D, we have Mr. Nirenberg who's been very gracious. He is our college counselor who is going to be um, working with our department now at the beginning of the year, very temporarily just to sort out, especially I think your biggest concerns right now would maybe be um, schedule related um you know to work with us on that um the counselor that we did have in our department um has relocated you know that oversaw those alphabet letters and we are obviously working toward and looking to bringing on board um you know so that you have your very own assigned counselor but just know that if a question comes up if you need to reach someone um you're always welcome to email me you can email one of the other counselors and we will definitely try to help you and, and work with you in the meantime okay um, just know that, you know, the best way obviously to reach us is through email. Um, if we need to call you, it's important that in your email, you provide us a phone number. Um, know that, you know, our phone call may come in as, as a private caller or a blocked call. And I know that in this time of, you know, all of these calls that we get that are very annoying and telemarketers, we sometimes don't want to answer our phones, but just know that if you put out an email and you're awaiting a response and you gave us your phone number, that may be us that are, that are trying to reach you. So just please be receptive to that. We also have as part of our department, um, Mr. Nelson Diaz, who is our secretary, and he is um, physically at the school, I think, correct? Yes, Ms. Dobbs? Yes. So yes. he's someone who can facilitate some things for us, you know, as far as like we, this week, we've had some questions about, you know, um, records, maybe international records or transcripts or something that you may need that may be something physical that's at the school. He can help facilitate that for us. Um, and he's really our liaison, our, our, our first line of defense, especially when we're physically back in the building. He is um, who you would come to see to schedule any kind of counselor appointments and, and things like that. We also work very closely at the school. We do have an assigned social worker. We have a mental health coordinator. This year, we're very, very fortunate. Ms. Dobbs was able to bring on board for us a trust counselor. And uh, what, what that entails, I know this may be a little different from, from middle schools, what that entails is someone who's on board that works closely with our department um, to work with those students who may need a little bit more of that social emotional um, support and guidance. Um, so that person is also there and, and part of our department. Um, you know, just so know that you have a, a team, just like you had in middle school, you know, obviously we have um, support for those ELL, ELL students, you know, foreign language students, um, for our um, ESC students, students with IEPs, um, students classified gifted with their EPs, um, and just, you know, obviously your, your regular student um, that doesn't have any of those specific classifications, we're here to work with all of you from, you know, the most academic to some of you who at some, find, at some point may find yourself that you're, you're struggling and you need that assistance. We're not just here for schedule changes. We're not just here for academic concerns. We know that it has been a very difficult time for a lot of people. Um, you have that support at the school, through the school, and we can even bridge that um, and extend it to through community support and social services. Um, so just know that you know we, we're here and, and we can help um, and get you whatever assistance you may need. You just need to reach out for us, okay? 
And I would be remiss if I did not mention, I know Mr. Nirenberg, our college counselor, had wanted me to mention to all of you a new program that the district has adopted, and it's called SCORE. Um, it's spelled S-C-O-I-R. And what this is, is basically a college board clearinghouse, a college network. For you as ninth graders, you're very lucky because this program is building itself as we go. It's a data, a data collection network. Um, where eventually you'll be able to go on there and find all kinds of resources and information about um, colleges. We wanna encourage you to go on. You could just basically Google SCORE, like I said, S-C-O-I-R, um, and you'll, you'll, the site will come up. You can uh, create an account, you could log in, you could start playing with it, navigate, um, be familiar with it, because eventually for all of you, um, this is going to be the platform where teachers would be writing letters of recommendation for you in the future. We as your counselors would also write letters of recommendation where your transcripts would be going out. And it's going to be a very nice um, resource and a great tool um, for you throughout your high school experience and your future um, college plans. So I want to encourage you to please, um, you know, join and, and sign up and, and uh, acquire an account. Okay. And on behalf of student services, you know, we just, again, we want to welcome you. Um, we're excited to, to work with you and to welcome you specifically when we're back in the building physically. We want to get to know you um, and, and don't be afraid to reach out. And just, again, it's a transition. Monday will come, but I promise you Tuesday will come right after Monday. And the summer never disappoints. June will come once again. And you'll be able to say, wow, I made it through all of that. You are going to be acquiring skills that, you know, you never imagined you would be acquiring and you're going to be learning in ways that, that you're going to find um, are, are unique and are special to you. And you'll see what works best for you. And this is all in good preparation, um, mm -hmm. especially for your future learning plans and for college. And email is a wonderful thing because that's what you will be using in college, not you know, your, your other uh, social media venues that you're used to using. It'll be email communication. So good luck to all of you. Have a great end of the week and a great weekend. Um, and just be gentle with yourselves, students and parents, and take time to enjoy. And now you have the opportunity to have that ice cream while you're sitting maybe in class at home, uh, or to take a little walk outside if you feel that it's just too much and a little overwhelming. Um, but just make sure that you tune back in, okay? We're here for you, okay? Thank you, Amanda. Um, and that I want to encourage everyone to make sure that you check out our PTSA's website um, to join our PTSA, for students to join the PTSA. Uh, they are, if we have parents out there and you're listening and you want to be a part of making things happen on campus, it's the best way to do that, um, to be an active um, member of our PTSA. Um, Gina, do you want to say anything before we sign off? Uh, no, I think that that's it. Just welcome to the school. And I think it's, it's a wonderful school. My kids, I have a, I have a senior this year and a sophomore and they have absolutely loved all the time that they've been at this school. I think you guys have uh, chosen uh, an amazing school. And I think that even with all the challenges that we're all facing right now with online, I, I, I can't say enough about our administrators and our teachers and, and all of our support staff. I just think it's, it's a wonderful school and I think you'll all be very happy here. And I encourage all of you to just jump in and get involved to the full extent that you can and uh, enjoy it. Thank you. And then I'm just going to say one thing before I hand it over to Ms. Dobbs to say good night. I do want to encourage all of you to go to the virtual activities office if you have any questions. It links you to my email. And it also links you to my open office hours. I have an open Zoom that will be available for you guys to click on that is every day during lunch. If it's ever closed, um, you, you'll, lo you'll log in and you'll see a little note that says that the office hours are closed. But um, it will be there for you guys to be able to um, ask any questions. We want to kind of use it as a rumor control as well um, so that if you guys um, need to know something before it becomes a crazy rumor, just come into the office and you can speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. It'll give you the chance to, to talk to me in person instead of sending me an email. All right, and so I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Dobbs to say any final words and a good night. 
All right, I just wanna thank everybody for joining us tonight. And thank you, Ms. Valero, Ms. Vinuesa, Ms. Panero, Mr. Batten for answering questions. Um, I know there's a lot of anxiety for Monday. Please don't worry. Look at the videos. We are gonna be here Monday. If you have any issues getting into your class, we are here to help you. Just call the school. Um, we will get through this. It will be fine. So thank you for joining us and have a wonderful evening. Good night. Good night, everyone.